It is still an active war, but the international zone of Baghdad is calmer than at any other point in Iraq's recent history. One place most Americans would recognize from news clips and photos is Saddam Hussein's parade area where troops passed under massive crossed swords. They are quite literally a direct reminder of the former dictator. Yeah, I believe they were actually uh, molded after Saddam Hussein's uh, um, wrist or hand. Today the swords serve as a reminder of Iraq's ties with violence and war. Cemented into the bottom of one of the swords are more than 2,000 helmets from one of Iraq's previous conflicts. The helmets are from the Iran-Iraq war and they're supposed to be the uh, Iranian soldiers' uh, helmets that, they, uh, that the Iraqi soldiers had killed. There's a whole lot of symbolism here, like you've got the helmets there embedded in the concrete so that every time the Iraqis would parade through here, you know, they're stepping on the heads of the Persians. As it turns out, there is little consistency in these Iranian military helmets, and they amount to a hodgepodge of surplus from other nations that Iran had amassed over the years. Jerry Brooks is a historian with the U.S. Army. This is an old German paratrooper's helmet. Uh, the World War II style. Uh, then you've got uh, the old uh, USM-1 helmet uh, that you had during World War II Korea and the early parts of Vietnam. Uh, here is a, um, that's a Swedish helmet right there. So you've got a whole series. You've got the, the, the British Tommy, uh, you know, template helmet. You've got the German paratrooper helmet. This is an Eastern Bloc uh, Russian right there. So you've got a whole you know, litany of all helmets. And what's interesting is all of these helmets were captured from the battlefields of the Iran-Iraq war between 80 and 88. You know, and it's just amazing. But the fact that, you know, you've got a German paratrooper's helmet there. Uh, I see in there the remnants of a British uh, motorcycle outrider's helmet, which you don't see that often. The turning of the tide in this war now allows time to pause and take in sights like this. In the past, things here were very different. Uh, well, yeah, in the, we're in the international zone, and um, it's you know pretty pretty much safe as can be. It's the safest part of uh, Baghdad, at least for us now. Overall, the security around here is better. You don't hear the shots fired constantly. I know the first time I was here, walking through here, you had to wear full body armor. Uh, your weapon was locked and loaded, and uh, that was 2005, 2006. Now here it is, 2008, and no body armor, weapons not loaded. You don't hear the gunfire in the distance. As a military historian in Iraq, Brooks says he's allowed an amazing vantage point as history moves forward. Oh, it, it's incredibly fascinating because you get an opportunity to look at what is going on. You're a fly on the wall as everything's happening around you, be it uh, planning for operations, be it coming out and looking at historic sites like this. It's just a wonderful job and uh, I'm very lucky to have it. This lieutenant colonel says he remains sold on the progress that the war in Iraq ultimately represents for many of the Iraqi people here. No matter what people say about what we did here, the fact that Iraq is now free of that kind of tyranny can only be a positive. In Baghdad, I'm Tim King reporting for SalemNews.com.